Oh, Sayo. Oh, Sayo. The Cherokee greeting. Wave the great feather. For the good of it. I'm going to start off with a Navajo chant. Claudia will back me up here. And they are, and she lives, she lives. That's the song. You know, that's introducing my subject of life from the Navajo. And yeah, we seek the best quality of life that can be had. Our lives depend on our hearts and our minds. They work together to keep us alive. And everything that has life lives through stages and these connect to form one life cycle. So that's the way that we're, we're going to start. First of March. First of March is the emergence of a being and a creature uh, usually known as the Ela monster lizard. I don't know why they used the monster in it. You know, it's a lizard. Um, Ela lizard. Uh, the Navajo name is Tenile. Tenile, like that. And so 1st of March is the emergence of this lizard from its hibernation, Brumachi. Is that how you say it? <laughs> and it's been there for the winter months when it's cold there. If you can kind of go down here to this uh, piece that I have here, where I'm making it look that this uh, lizard is emerging. He's emerging out of the earth. He's emerging now out of his uh, yeah, debrumation, out of his uh, hiber hibernation there. And uh, as well as that's now happening in real life, that's this one here. <clears throat> um, also, mythically, he's conceived as uh, coming into being when the earth has been conceived. Now, that brings in a kind of a science knowledge, I guess you would, you would call it. This creature, this animal, uh, the scientists say, has come into being during the Cretaceous era, the Cretaceous time. And the date that they have given to this uh, creature is 166,000 million years, is that right? 166 million. 166 million to 140 million years. That is a very, very long time. And certainly early enough for people, in this case the Navajos, to uh, say he's come into being when the earth was conceived here. So that is a long time. Here in the desert east of us here, we call Anza Varego, uh, the paleontology there has found only one specimen for this animal and that is, you know, the past million years. Like it's somewhere there in the Pleistocene there. Uh, it's more native to the Sonoran Desert, that's Arizona into you know, northern Mexico there. And uh, the name Ela actually is a Latin or Greco-Latin word um, meaning beaded skin or studded skin. They call it hiloderma. Hiloderma. So the word ila has come out of it. So interesting, the river that is there has actually been named after the ila lizard monster like that. So the ila river is also been the home of where there was uh, um, quite a population, I guess you would could say, of these lizards uh, at the place of that river at one time, not too long ago. So that gives quite an antiquity, you know, uh, to it. So I have another illustration of this 
the Ela lizard right down here and that's on the uh, rabbit knoll that I've been showing for the past few weeks that's out there um, by uh, Santa Isabel or Warner Springs or uh, Koopa. So all of that there. <clears throat> um, then you can come back here for a minute. Navajo. All this is Navajo. Uh, the Navajo themselves call themselves Dene. Dene. And they are related, if not stemmed from people with the same name over there. Uh, it's called Kotan, the east part of the Tarim Basin, or the very west of the Himalayas there. Uh, there are people there who call themselves the Dene, and so forth. So it may be that these people have actually stemmed from there. But back to the name Navajo, um, what it means, it means keepers of the great field. And the great field is actually a cultural translation of another term, another term that is called the dark sea of awareness. Now that phrase actually has come from Carlos Castaneda and this book, one of his several books of magical passes that I have uh, spoke about before. So this book, if you uh, type in on your internet this phrase, you know, the dark sea of awareness, it will tell you what Don Juan, this Carlos is reporting in English, will tell you what he says that this is here. and. Uh, it does, uh, reportedly, Castaneda's material is being translated from Spanish. And the, Span the Spanish name would be Marro Oscuro Conciencia. <laughs> I say that. Conciencia. Conciencia, okay. The Dark Sea of Awareness. And I think that's a very good title for uh, involving all of this, or we say the great the dark sea of awareness. Uh, if we can go way up here, uh, this is my painting that is a replication of a Navajo mask, a mask that is used in a certain ceremonies. It's a helmet type of mask, you know. <clears throat> and in English it's called Black God. Uh, that seems very misleading and it does require some explanation. The mask itself is male, but what it represents and the content of that isn't. In other words, you could say it's more like female. So the Navajo rendering of that would be Hashis Lucini, which I'm giving as the translation, blackness is her body. Since in English, black is kind of limited as a word, that is, you know, black is a color, or it has no light, or it has no color in it, uh, anything like that. But in <coughs> other languages, such as the one that we're dealing with right now, of the Navajo, or the Diné, um, it has far more dimension to it. That is, <coughs> black uh, as a symbol has more like abstract meaning. In other words, any category that you put black into means the whole thing, means the origin of it, the quality of it, the future of it, the summation of it, and all, all of that. So um, here, right below that, there's an illustration of a star. This is black star. And that means that black star is all stars. Everything about stars all comes together in black star. And with that blackness as her body, Hushish Lassini, and right below that, my illustration of a mythical Gila lizard, Tenile, here. They are both united by black star there. And to come all the way over here to look at another illustration I have, that I have made of the way I'm calling this blackness is her body that contains all of the stars of the, of the sky, of the heavens, here. 
and then it can go all the way over there. There's a sand painting illustration of this same person. Blackness is her body. And this one was rendered, it's, he signed it on back as Carlos. Um, not, not me, who is Carlos, but this is the Carlos who did that sand painting there. Now I have other renderings of, here is actually a creature <laughs> illustration of the uh, Ela lizard, Tenile. And then just move up a little bit here. Here, this is an illustration of part of the chat way. This chat way that I'm concerned with here is both you know the life way, which which is the Yanaji, and also the Flint way, and that's Beijing. So the life way and the Flint way go together. And they are also the main features for the Ila, the Ila lizard. The Ila monster lizard who symbolizes the healing power of the medicine man. He is the first medicine man in Navajo. Did I know which Suki is the first medicine man, the first healer of the Navajo? Um, also, the, it is called the Flint Way or the Life Way, the Big J Way. And then Big Fly, if you can go way over there, you can see a Big Fly. Big Fly is the door guard for the Ela lizard. And he gives instructions for the smoke offering. And so from there, you can go down to here beneath the illustration. You see that here is a pipe and a tobacco pouch. <clears throat> this tobacco pouch is a woodlands style of tobacco pouch embroidered. And this pipe, the very old pipe, I found it up here in the mountains, you know, called Arrow Maker's Ridge with some pottery uh, shards. So that, all this comprises the offering to this being, Denile, the Ila, like that. So Big Fly is the one who tells the person what offering to make and that then the acceptance of that offering has a drama to it, a ritual drama to it, so that the spirit will accept that and smoke it. <clears throat> and the special healing of the Ela lizard is to be cut up, scattered, and reassembled. And then he restores everyone in a gathering with a healing ceremony called Rain of Flint. Um, either he, the Atali has a basket of flint and he will you know, rattle it, or more commonly uh, he will have a, a rattle made of deer hoofs that he will rattle uh, that sounds similar to the rattle of flints, and that's what's being called the rain of flint. And the name for all of this, new Noa Nedi, meaning to restore. Now I'm going to actually give to you here um, the chat way. These are called chat ways they're, because there is kind of a song in it, but they're more than that. I could say it's a kind of a charm, a kind of a charm that you could keep with you like a rabbit's foot. <laughs> I like that. And I'm a beneficiary of this. Most of the chat ways, there are got to be hundreds of them. And maybe in old days there were hundreds upon hundreds of them. But there still are very, very many of these chat ways, is the way I'm referring to it, like that. And most of them are going to be... Uh, in the community, or at the very least, the family. Um, they're all for healing. They're all for restoration. Um, and this is one that can be presented that way, because it requires expense. You know, there are sand paintings, there are uh, 
people who are mask impersonators. Uh, there's food, you know, for the people who attend. So it has an expense to it, you know. Uh, this particular one can also be given, as it was to me, to an individual. It's a kind of an emergency um, situation <laughs> if you have an emergency. And so I'm a beneficiary of this uh, inaji by way of the hatali. I cut myself up into little pieces and cast them out upon the dark waters. My blood is gathered by the Ani Awi, the ant people. The spider people restring my nerves. The sun restores my eyes and little wind my ears. The moon reshapes my body and my long hair by the darkness people. Don boy and Don girl give me my face. My mind is lighted by my maternal grandfather Yabachi and pollen boy and my traveling <coughs> means by grasshopper girl. And now as I am reassembled the sun restores the 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 holy wind restores my breath. The sun shines on me to restore winking. The two Aga people step over me and I am revived. Uh, the stepping over is definitely a ritual act that uh, has, um, well in this case, you know, a finality, you know, that, you know, makes it so, it seals it that, that way. Um, and whenever I have since then had the need to issue the first one, it works. <laughs> yes, I kind of use that metaphor as a, as a rabbit foot. So it's something that once uh, you have um, received it, can I put it that way, um, it has a, a relative protection to you because you have an awareness, you have an awareness of that. and. It's, it's going to be there, you're going to think of it, and it's going to help you in that, that way here. <clears throat> um, when I go way over there, again, you see those two figures standing there. Uh, this, these are Navajo made, they're a little bit old, but this, you can see then how the people dress and mask themselves to impersonate these. According to you know their their myth is that these deities originally wanted to make the human people to look like this. <laughs> so in turn the human people have figured out how to make themselves look like these deities called Ye. So there you can see them. <clears throat> and above it I have a, just a little sand painting I, I found. It's by Aaron Clark and it, it would be a uh, maternal grandfather. It would look actually um, <coughs> like, like the mask with the eagle feathers over the head. Then here to see this uh, weaving, this blanket here, this is a very old, um, probably, you know, like a little bit more than a hundred years old here. It's in very, very good condition. And uh, with the mention of that, you can look over here at this, this weaving. I told you last week that we were friends with and stayed out there in Kienta, in Dinata. And Lani Ozzi's mother, she was a weaver, and she lived out there in Mon Monument Valley, in the, the Hogan, uh, that Lani had built uh, with her daughter. And we were there in the... Uh, summer, in the warm months, so they lived in the, the Ramada adjacent to the Hogan where she lived and she, just the two of them, and she had her own uh, sheep and goats and the goats have a bell so you could hear, that, hear them. So she did the whole process, you know, ra raising you know, the sheep and shearing them and treating the wool and she wove this piece here 
uh, during the time that we were acquainted with her. So I'm making all of this, you know, to be of the Navajo, and I think I had to mention the eagle down there, because this phrase I'm using, you know, the dark sea of awareness from Don Juan, also he calls the eagle, and that there is actually a one of Castaneda's books titled for that eagle. <clears throat> now, another thing that I want to bring up here, uh, in a way, because these ceremonies, we're referring to them, uh, sings, they usually call them sings, um, are about restoration, to restore. Uh, and just to kind of introduce it this way, uh, the 19th century, known as the century of dishonor, <clears throat> doesn't take too much knowledge of American history to know what happened like that in somewhere, maybe 1860 around there. The American army invaded the Navajo Nation. The Navajo Nation, Dinata, was a peaceful, non-contending nation of people here. Uh, very industrial, solvent, I would say. Uh, they had their flocks of sheep and they did have trade by way of their weavings to other people throughout the Southwest. And um, they also maintained orchards, the peach orchards mainly, and, and so forth. So uh, this country, their country was invaded by the American army and laid to waste. And uh, they, they said 9,000 of these people were herded together and marched to captivity in Bosque Redondo in um, New Mexico. The casualty for all this, they say, was about 5,000 people there. <clears throat> they were there maybe like three years and somehow the government said uh, they could leave their captivity. And so the Hatali somehow got together with a coyote, a female coyote, and he put a stone bead in her mouth, turned her around and around, and she led the people back to Dinata. And there they began to rebuild uh, their country. Along with that, so all these things that happened to them, all this suffering and misery and, and death and destruction of their, their country and everything, had to be dealt with. <clears throat> And that's the most amazing thing about all of this here, restoration. What was the way that they could restore themselves to free themselves of harboring you know, anger and all those things that would go with that kind of experience. So I'm reading this from one of the chant ways, which was instrumental in, we're saying, bringing, bringing this about. Uh, a way of dealing with it. <clears throat> Rainboy, Litsa Achki, was completely destroyed, blasted into bits, scattered in every direction by the wrath of winter thunder. The thunder people gathered Rainboy's bones and flesh and put them between sacred buckskins. When white wind was laid under the top cover. Rainboy tried to move, but still he could not get up. Then Pink Thunder put little wind under the cover and entered Rainboy's ear. He could hear. He had life at the tips of his fingers and everywhere that wind had gone. But still he could not get up. Maternal grandfather, Yebiche, then put Rainboy's son under the cover. He supplied moisture, tears, saliva, mucus, mucus, and still Rainboy tried in vain to get up. So maternal grandfather, Yebiche, put collected pollen under the cover, and it turned into toenails fingernails, hair. And yet Rainboy still 
could not stand up. So, insects of all kind were called to help. Some found small portions of Rainboy's blood and brought it back. But not until they found the curve of his upper lip could Rainboy's restoration be complete. So we see that there is a much for other people to uh, gain from learning, you know, this way, the beauty way of the Navajo, the Dene. <clears throat> uh, did I mention the eagle? Yes. So the eagle is also, yeah, I did. You know, I got one other thing. March is also given to Women's Month. So if we can come over here and look at this lineup that I have. Here is a Navajo made, a Navajo woman, very, very elegantly dressed. Really, really is, you know. So this is to say March is Women's Month. <clears throat> and to go with it, well, I have, you know, something else here, which also would be something very early. If you go up to the top there, you see this figure here. This is in here is to represent Sky Woman. <clears throat> so sometime in the remote past, usually they say maybe in the fourth world, a Sky Woman bent down to the earth and kissed the earth. And when she did, two of these people came out. And that was Badger and Coyote. And Badger, this is Badger, these are Pescola masks here. Um, Badger, he, then he came out and he turned around and he went back into the ground, back into the earth here. And he even went and visited the early, early worlds and all of that. But also in relation to woman, he continues to appear among women. And he, what can you call it, he stimulates, he arouses their erotic desire. So he's very, um, of functional in that way among women. And here, uh, this is a coyote. This is Nautooth coyote. A Nautooth coyote uh, can not, he's been given divine permission actually to gnaw through uh, any of the empirical realities. And so he is also very much uh, a part of all of this that we're introducing woman. Woman's month is what we're saying here. And if you can go all the way, way over there, you're going to see the painting I showed last week. This is Claudia's painting of the horny tone rock shirt here. And then we have the rabbit and coyote down there because uh, the rabbit's, you know, very prominent at this time that uh, Americans are calling Easter time. So, so all of that. And if you go up a little bit, there's a hoop. I made a hoop here with a red feather in it. This is from Willow. Uh, and just to, to say here with this Navajo culture, hoops are utterly ubiquitous throughout this culture. Uh, they're from very big ones that people pass through to little ones that are rings. Uh, they're made of all different kinds of material, different kinds of wood. Uh, they're painted different kinds of color. Uh, they also, you know, have a category. They can be stars. They can be the the conveyance to stars. Uh, buffalo people, you know, travel on them. Uh, that just goes on and on. All of the ways that hoops of different kinds function in this culture here. And so we can come back here. Um, yes, you can look look up there at uh, my illustration of a horny toad, a rock shirt, look, looking over Claudia's painting. <laughs> <clears throat> there is also, a, a, actually, a Lifeway hoop also. Um, and in that one, Spider Woman figures because she asked Coyote to get feathers for her life hoop to, to renew that. So give me a, a, a sense here of the culture that still is thriving here in uh, Turtle Island um, 
and that would be good if other people began to wake up to an original, thriving indigenous culture that's for today. Aho. Aho.